Hello everybody, welcome to Realistic Realtors with the Superior Coaching School. I'm Nick. This is Bill. We are all about putting plans into action. Today we are on lesson 15. We're talking about farming. Yep, and what I want you guys to do is always refer to the success guide that we gave you and you'll see that we have so many handouts for you that will help you track your success. And today we talk about farming. I want to bring out a, a quote, okay? And to plan a garden is to believe in tomorrow. You have to nurture a farm to make it grow. You have to nurture your business. It's the same mentality, okay? So let's jump into farming and how we're going to grow our business. Let's look at the first step. We have to choose a community wisely. We have to choose the right community. Now, Nick, you live in a community. You grew up in a community. Was there one agent that kind of owned that community? There were a couple that, that were, you know, mailing things out, market reports, uh, week, uh, monthly newsletters, things of that uh, that nature. But when you look at the, the statistics, um, there wasn't really one that had large market share. Okay. So, but there were a few, I guess, that were trying. So w w with my point with that, that's a, a great point you just brought up. So Nick's in a community, it's called Davis Lake, that you could actually go and farm. Nick's saying there's not one realtor that kind of owns that community. So the two points I want to bring up when you pick a community, pick a community that has the right size. We don't want to pick a community that has 30 houses in it. Pick a community that has at least 250 houses in that community. And Nick, pick a community that has turnover. What happens if we pick a community that doesn't have turnover? No homes are sold. You don't uh, get any business. <laughs> right. You know, I, I had a realtor before that picked a community, and uh, I was like, how's it going? And they're like, well, I'm really getting no action. So I looked up the community, and guess what? They sold seven houses um, that year um, in that community. So that realtor picked a community that didn't have a lot of turnover. So we, we have to do that. So in picking community, Nick, also price point is really important. For me, I always wanted to go after the three to $500,000 price point because they need a realtor. Um, they respect our, our, our decisions, and there's a lot of turnover in the area in that price point. Nick, what happens if we pick a price point over a million dollars? Well, what happens is that, first of all, uh, those people at that price point, they already have a realtor. Right. Um, and they don't want to even hear you. Uh, second of all, they probably don't even check their mail, really. <laughs> or they'll throw out all their mail. Right. Uh, <laughs> and also, at, at, that, at that price point, there's not going to be that many sales in that target area. Not a lot of turnover. Not yeah. a lot of turnover. I will say, though, um, for the lower price points, you know, over if you're, you're in an area of the country where there's not as much, or not as many large subdivisions, um, you can farm an area. It's okay if, if, there, if there's not really a subdivision and there's no HOA, but there's an area where there's a lot of turnover. Um, you can still farm an area. It just really depends on what your strategy uh, in targeting that area is. And, and I'll bring up what strategy I use. So I went and basically farmed a community called Skybrook where I lived. That was the perfect, uh, where you live is a perfect community usually uh, to farm. And you should be at least farming that community. Why did I pick that community? Because the average sale is about $400,000. It was a good price point. Most people in that range will use a realtor. Um, the community had good turnover about 40, 50 homes a year, and there wasn't a realtor that uh, owned that community yet. So I said, okay, so I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna farm that community. I'm gonna flyer if it's in the cylinders, Nick, or it's in postcards, either way. Uh, Nick, you brought up, what's a better point, what's your point about using postcards over the flyers? Well, I think what's key is that if, if you have a postcard uh, and you mail them, Get, you're getting in the mailbox. If you're in the, if you're doing a flyer and just kind of, you know, handing them out, uh, putting them in the cylinders, a lot of people just throw those away because what are those for? That's for solicitation. Um, what you're saying by mailing postcards or mailing uh, things in the, you know, in the in the mailbox is you're saying I'm willing to spend the money to earn your business. Absolutely. Um, so what we're going to look at, we're just review before we get to the next step. Pick a neighborhood that is not owned by another realtor. Pick a neighborhood that has good turnover. Pick a neighborhood that is a price point that fits your business. And then it's a long-term commitment, Nick. Um, you have to do this year after year. I had a realtor that did it for a couple months and stopped doing it. Well, you're not going to get any results unless you stick to it. Um, you will earn the other people in the community, the owners and sellers in that community, the residents, your trust by showing them commitment. And what did I mail out, Nick, that worked real well for me? I mailed out basically uh, a flyer and a postcard 
and basically what it had on there are the recent sales. Actually, we can pull it up here so you can see it behind us. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll pull it up and show that. Um, and you will see on the flyer, it said Skybrook, um, you know, your, your community's number one expert. And I would list all the houses that sold in the last, say, quarter. And it will say when they sold, the address, how many square feet, how many bedrooms. And people love seeing that. Every time, Nick, I went over for um, a CMA, a comparative market analysis, to list their house, they had that flyer there. So I was seen as your, your community expert, and that's what you're going to want to be seen as. And this really comes back to nurturing, uh, because, you know, planting for tomorrow, as we started with that quote, because really what Bill's saying, you know, you have your, uh, you know, some of your examples behind us, um, really what he's saying is that you're branding yourself and you're getting the name recognition. I mean, the whole point is that when you're sending out, uh, you know, direct mail uh, farming a community, you are just doing it because you know that 99.9% .9 of those people will throw it away instantly. Sure. But you know that the few that don't, they'll recognize your face, they'll see you, uh, and they'll know when they're thinking about selling real estate, they'll know who to call. Now, Nick, I did it the old school way, okay? I would send out postcards, I would send out flyers, uh, I would give just sold update, I would mail out information like that. Where would you take it what I did there and combine it with the new school approach? Well, here's what I would do. I would say you want to find your community online on Facebook. Almost every large subdivision, like you said, over 250 homes, is going to have a Facebook neighbors group, okay? And that's where people, on, well, they'll post uh, questions about um, the rules of the community, uh, maybe a yard sale that's going on. You'll be surprised. People will say, hey, who do you know in the area that could help me sell my home? Um, there will be people on there that ask these kinds of questions, but it's a good place to put events. And if your community that you're trying to target does not have a neighbor's page, well, congratulations. You can make your own yeah. um, and you can run the page totally free and you can do it yourself by inviting all the neighbors and getting in contact with the HOA board. Um, getting elected to the board, by the way, is a very powerful way of farming. We know a realtor actually does very well, does very well in, in Mooresville. Tom does. Um, yep. and, uh, and he is on the board of directors or the HOA board. Um, and his community knows everybody in yep. that area. But these are ways that you can then connect on Facebook with everybody. And now what you can do is you can kind of run and manage that page. Any open houses that are going on in the community, you want to have your website, a link to that open house, and you want to post it in that uh, community uh, page and let them know, hey, here's an event going on, right? You can also do the same thing in Nextdoor. Now, Nextdoor is going to have a little bit more strict restrictions on the rules on what you can post and what you can't because they want you to sponsor. But what's key is that if you are an active member of that community, you can slowly build the same name recognition, and it's totally free. And tell everyone what, what Nextdoor is. So Nextdoor is the big green um, icon, an end uh, that you'll see on the App Store or on uh, Google Play. And basically what it is, it's an online forum for, web, uh, for your, uh, your neighborhood. So again, people you know, will ask about local restaurants. Hey, where do I go to eat? Uh, what's going on? Hey, anybody here uh, see that stray dog um, last night on this road, whatever? But you know, so there's all kinds of stuff. But you also see, hey, I'm looking for a good uh, landscaper. Who do you know, right? Or I'm looking for somebody who can help me retile some, uh, you know, my kitchen or my, or my bathroom, right? And they'll ask these different things. And what does that present to you? An easy opportunity. Bill, how many times have you referred vendors to your clients. All the time. You know, it's another way to show that you're, you're a market expert is supply your clients with a vendor list. And I guess you could do that in uh, the community website. Yeah, and it's, and it's a great way to do it because not only does it give you stature, it makes you look like an expert. Hey, I always reach out. So when anybody posts something like that on Facebook or next door, I always say, hey, it's Nick McCree. I'm a local realtor here. Um, your neighborhood expert, the guy I always use or the gal I always use is, is this, and I would tag them. So now you're building rapport with your vendors, you're showing that you're an expert, and you're letting people know subtly that you're, you're the neighborhood realtor. Absolutely. Uh, another thing I do, Nick, is I will offer our free CMA, a free market analysis. I will uh, offer free home evaluation, um, and I'll do that old school way. I'll, I'll you know, just put a flyer out. One of my postcards will be that. Um, so you would probably tell me to take that and put it into uh, that flyer of a free home evaluation to the community website? Yeah. I mean, look, what you can do is repurpose every, every piece of content you have. If you're going to spend the thousands of dollars to mail, get a, a PDF copy from your printer 
and say, I want to put this online. Give, you know, I need a copy, a PNG uh, that I can put online and, and promote it. Because then subconsciously, when they get that in their mail, they're going to say, I've seen this somewhere. Sure. Right? And they're going to know that it was yours. And uh, another uh, little piece of advice I like to give to realtors, if you can't afford to farm a whole community, well, get some generic flyers or postcards made up. And when it's a nice day out there and you know people are doing yard work, go walk the community. Just yeah. go meet people. You'll see people walking their mailbox. They're watching their kids in the, the, the front lawn playing or riding a bicycle. Go to the uh, community and meet people. Just say, here, here you go. My name is Bill Price. Um, I see you got a beautiful house here. Can you do me a favor? I just want to give you my information. I live in the community. I'm a realtor. I'm trying to build my business. I'm trying to get to know everyone in the community. If you know anyone that's looking to move to the community or move out of the community, I would really appreciate sharing my information. And I think something that's important too, because we, we've talked to a couple of realtors that have done really well with this, um, bring gifts, um, right. right? It can be something small. It can be something, you know, there was a realtor that was bringing around. She had a big garden in her backyard. She was offering to bring um, like little potted plants uh, to people who had just moved into the neighborhood, welcoming them. That's just a great way to meet people. You know what I like about potted plant? They're not going to throw it away. Well, exactly. Yeah. They're going to nurture it <laughs> and they're going to think of you, you know. Um, they'll be like, I'm growing this plant, or damn, I got a water stand plant. That guy, Nick, <laughs> dropped his plant off to me. What am I going to do with this thing? Yeah, I'm I kill it. plants all the time. <laughs> um, so either way, for good or bad, they'll remember you, which is, which is good. And, you could, and I think she also puts her branding on a sticker. She puts it right onto the, onto the plant. <laughs> yeah, and another thing is also, it's, not, it's just not just about yourself. Uh, you can send out you know, notices like, I just reduced the price of this house, or, or coming soon. Or, or price reduced or open house. And obviously guys, you can do it the old school way with the flyers and the postcards, right? And, but you have to take that approach and combine it with a new school way and get it out there on social media. And I think another important thing to mention, because we mention events a lot, um, be willing to host and be creative, host an event. If you go to the social board, right, of your, your community, you find out who's, who manages some of the community events. Um, and you say, hey, I have an idea that maybe we'll do a movie night or let's do uh, an event at the pool, something like that. They'll never turn you down because they want the help. Right. They want the volunteers. They're, they're looking for people who want to host those events. So don't be afraid to, to step up and, and, take, and take a little bit of a leadership role in that respect. Absolutely. So uh, let's finish up and uh, took some notes here. We're, we're just going to review. When you're farming a community, if it's postcards, if it's mailers or flyers, whatever it is, you decide what you're going to do. Make sure you pick the right community, the community that is large enough, a community that has a lot of turnover, a community that isn't owned by a realtor because it's really hard to break in to that community. Um, and uh, you have to commit yourself long term. It's not just a month or two of farming. It's years. I've been farming Skybrook for, I don't know, like 12 years, you know, um, but that's where I do like a third of my business, just that one community. Um, so I think we uh, shared a lot of great information. It's stuff that worked for me over the years. Hope you guys can use that. I will say, if we're talking about action, right? Yep. Our, our action steps for this, this lesson this week would be make sure everybody goes and identifies a community, just like you mentioned, um, but then put together a marketing plan. Um, and it can be whatever, whatever you want. And I think comment below uh, some of the ideas that you guys have um, you know, in our Facebook group or private group on, because I think we've shared a couple creative ideas. Sure. But there's so many different creative ways you can go out there and farm communities. So do that. And, and uh, why don't you introduce our guest? A uh, real good friend of mine. Um, I believe she has sold at least over a thousand homes in this one community. Wow. Okay. She's been wow. selling real estate for 20 years. You do the math. That's a lot of homes in the one community. Uh, she's been farming that community, uh, like I said, for 20 years. And she is, uh, sells more houses in that community than any other realtor. Uh, her name's Heidi Hines. Uh, she has a very successful team. Uh, you guys are really going to enjoy her interview. So watch it uh, and get back to us how you liked it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week.